we saved the best for last, and this is also the way that we'll be working with Nebula from now until the end of this little mini bonus section. And that's focused on the EQs, the preamplifiers, and the amplifiers. And this is really what this particular process of sampling hardware is designed to do. So really, Nebula is superior in these cases when it comes to realism. But I want you to remember that realism doesn't necessarily mean the best or the most flexible. It's entirely up to you. You'll hear some of these EQs and these preamplifiers and be blown away, really, in the quality of them. But the question is, how useful is it and what's the application? So as I said in the presentation, the application of these EQs, specifically because a lot of these are just one band EQs, that's the way you'd have to do it to keep the file sizes down, to keep this manageable. It's definitely specialty EQ application. You're not going to go in here and attempt to use Nebula really for your blend EQ, or at least none of the programs in the freeware can really do that for you. But for a specialty case, for an enhance it case, absolutely it can be applied. Same thing is going to be true for um, the pre-amplifiers as well. So let's just jump in here and listen to a couple of examples. Let's just do a review on the gain staging here. This time we'll do it with um, the actual clip gain, okay? So let's go in, let's grab our analysis effect. Let's set up the calibration to be at minus 17, okay, instead of minus 18, because this is not a VU meter, this is an RMS meter. And let's just adjust the gain accordingly. All right, so we're hovering right around that zero point. This is where we want to be. This is where we're assuming most people have set their reference when they've sampled the hardware to use Nebula. So we can leave that alone for now. We could even get rid of it. We don't need it, but we'll just keep it for the sake of example. Bring in Nebula and let's load up. Let's start with an EQ. Let's use this mastering EQ high shelf. Okay, the frequency is at 8.75K, and we can increase the gain. We can then also adjust the Q of the shelf. So something very steep. And something a little bit more subtle. And if you don't understand what this Q or, sh or um, what this Q slash resonance control is doing, you have to go back to the videos where we talked about uh, the TDR Nova. And we can even look at something like this here quickly if we just bring in a high shelf here. And then we can adjust the Q control so we can make it a little bit steeper or we can be a little bit more subtle with it and a little bit more smooth with it if we want. So um, that's really what's going on here. Uh, again, it's different from probably what you see in the Nova, but that's the idea. So you just have to use your ears. But you can hear how amazing this high shelf sounds. Obviously, this is a little bit extreme, but it goes to show you what Nebula can do with the EQs. Let's try a different EQ that's going to be uh, a little bit more drastic, at least in just even bringing it on. Let's go with the um, Retro Helio Mid. Okay, and I'm just going to start by turning this off and on, and you'll hear how the color of this EQ is brought in without even changing the frequency or the gain. So listen especially to the high end. Listen to those hats, how they're dulled out. Okay, cool. So let's see. What range do we have here on the frequency? Um, sometimes this doesn't always update properly. So we have from 700 up to actually right there at uh, 20,000 hertz, so 20K. So let's just go with something really high.
or maybe 15k. And compensate. So a very interesting, very character-driven uh, EQ here. And there are other options that you could go and experiment with on your own. But remember that it, you're probably never going to see um, multiple bands that you can edit. Maybe we'll have one here with this parametric. Is that going to give us multiple bands? This gives us multiple bands that we can adjust here uh, from 25 up to... Uh, 22k actually so let's just try this out and experiment and see how like radical we can get an absolutely beautiful passive EQ that you have right here um, inside of Nebula. I mean, it sounds just amazing. It's so silky, it's so smooth. You wouldn't even really know that an EQ is being brought on, which is typically the characteristic of uh, passive EQ. So let's listen to a couple of the preamps here. Um, some of these are more deceptive than others and how much gain is brought in, but that's okay. We'll just flip through them. Yeah, so for some genres of music, this is a little bit more subtle in tonal change, but it might work well on every single channel in the mix. It may, it may not. We actually even have something specific here that I think is called analog channel, where you could try and put this on every single thing in the mix so that you can get that bit of uh, cohesion from what this adds to, uh, or what this would add to each signal. So let's try it out and just listen to it. And with this one, you can actually control the harmonics. So the even harmonics versus the odd harmonics. So if we want all even harmonics, we just bring this all the way up. Or all odd. So you can hear how radically that actually does color the sound. So um, actually not the biggest fan of that. I probably wouldn't recommend that you apply that to every single thing in the chain. Uh, but let's just try maybe something else. Let's choose this low end one. This one will make a big difference. Probably is also adding quite a bit of gain. So that's pretty cool. So this seems to be the preamp on some kind of tube limiter that's, I guess, relatively cheap here, prosumer preamp. So um, there you have it. That's Nebula with the preamps and with the EQ. In a few future videos, we're going to be talking about actually applying this to sounds beyond just a drum loop. Uh, that was just being used so that you could really hear um, all of these things. And hopefully you can listen to it in objective light because you'll read online, you know, oh man, Nebula is really great. It's so accurate. It's so realistic. But it doesn't work every single time. And you just have to be willing to use your ears and always reserve judgment until you've listened. Because for some styles of music, probably none of these programs would be very appropriate. Where for other styles, 
files, you could use this thing all over the place.